My name is Nightwalker Lots, and I used to own one of the biggest realms for Minecraft Anarchy. But now that realm is dead. If you're from my Discord, this is a video that I know you have wanted badly for some time now. And if you have no idea the realm existed, then sit back and relax as I explain how I went from owning one of the most active Anarchy realms to being bested by gravel. So, what made me start this realm in the first place? Well, you see, off camera, I was involved with a lot of Anarchy Realms back in 2018. It was around the same time FitMC started getting traction for his Anarchy videos, and I wanted to try and see what the experience was like. But little did I know, Bedrock Edition was not going to give me that experience. The hacks for either version were different because the meta was using 32k weapons along with auto totem on bedrock condition. What makes things worse is that there is no current possible way to add plugins to realms that would make us a good anti-cheat. So the only option was if you couldn't beat them, join them. But I didn't see it that way. After playing Anarchy on both versions, I started to notice a lot of things that could have been done differently on the realms that were up at the time. And all of a sudden, a fire of passion for this style of gameplay ignited inside of me, and I was going to try and change the way Anarchy on Bedrock Edition was done. So I had to start by making my own Minecraft realm, and the first step was some kind of security. So I used command blocks to set up some kind of primitive anti-cheat. After that was to advertise it. Notice I only ever made one video on this realm, and that's because after that video was published, members came rolling in like crazy after the span of a few months. And I assume it's just because Anarchy was just so popular at that time. I would hop on every now and then, and there's always new names on the members list. The only complaint that people had was that the realm was always full. If it weren't for the fact that owners could ignore Q, I would also not be able to join myself. I had staff members that existed in secret, and they had a hard time doing their job because they couldn't join either. The realm was so popular that people even had trouble joining at night, because that's when the foreign players would start to play. And I would usually get questions on my Discord about the realm that were not even in English. The veteran and peacekeeper banner became sacred because there was a story behind the banner. You see, when I first created the realm, the first person to join made his house right next to spawn. I warned him not to, and I did what I knew eventually was going to happen, and I, I destroyed that base. But the next day, a bigger base was built in the exact same place, and it was the same guy. I watched him as his base got blown up by other players, but his this guy just kept rebuilding the base every time. And eventually, he put this banner on the outside of his base. And after a month or so, I came back on the realm, and I was shocked to see the same person was living in the same base right next to Spawn, which was hovering on the ground because, you know, there was no ground left. Uh, so, I took that banner, and I repurposed it, for what would become the Peacekeeper banner. This means it is the first banner design that was made by the first player to join the realm, and it represents the same persistence and dedication that was shown by its maker. And eventually this banner became the Peacekeeper banner. So basically, there are two types of factions. You had the one that kept order, and then you had warmongers that tried to claim the realm as theirs. Factions would claim important parts of the world by putting their banners everywhere. This meant that if you entered spawn, not just in the overworld, but in any dimension, that you were at the mercy of whatever faction owned that territory. Now, some of the staff wanted to break that chain, so to speak, 
and I told them that it's anarchy, so as, as long as you're playing by the books, go right on ahead. So the Peacekeeper faction was then made, and some of the Peacekeeper members were secretly staff and even Unity affiliates. The Peacekeepers took over the Overworld spawn and then held it. We started to ally with other factions who would help us keep territory in other dimensions, and our tactic was that they would hold territory in those dimensions while the Peacekeepers would hold territory in the Overworld spawn. So technically, it was all under the Peacekeepers. And this way, this kind of made the Peacekeepers a parent faction of sorts, who operated in secret, hardly ever took in new members, and usually pulled strings from behind the scenes. This faction even went as far as sending spies to other rivaling factions just to feed information about their battle plans. The PKs were short, held territory for so long that eventually people just gave up trying to claim it. So eventually the PKs disbanded, but only because this is what they wanted everyone to think. The PKs for this reason would be nicknamed one of the sleeping giants to other factions like this, the Eye, owned by Spoogles, and the Melon Republic, owned by Lunel. And this nickname came from the fact that factions only really existed when there seemed to be a problem or a threat to the realm. As soon as a faction thought it was safe to take over the realm for themselves, the Peacekeepers along with its allied factions would then group up again and then contest them. Inspired by 2B2T, when the PK faction wasn't active, they would instead bear the veteran banner, which was also gifted to other members, very rarely, to those who played the realm before it started at even have seasons. Now in order to explain the blackout, which is what I'm going to call the event that ultimately killed the realm, I'll have to briefly explain to you how I did the security. At first, it was just a platform of bedrock hovering around 200 blocks above spawn, and it held the command blocks responsible for the makeshift anti-cheat I made. What ruined this is a hacked client called Horion that developed an exploit called CBE, or the command block exploit. At first, what this allowed you to do was open up command blocks and change the commands inside of them without needing operator privileges or even the need to be in creative mode. It could also locate commands that were close enough to you in which all you needed to do was input the coordinates to a command block to open it. Because of this new exploit, I had moved the entire command block station to a far away undisclosed location. As well as putting in a countermeasure that would immediately teleport any player that wasn't staff to spawn if they were too close to the command station. This was a solid fix for a while but CBE would evolve over time to become an even more overpowered exploit. Horion then made it possible to run commands in a realm without the need for an existing command block. What this means is that players could just run a command that disabled command blocks entirely, which made my anti-cheat useless. Players set up commands at spawn like slash kill all or slash game mode C to all players, but after a few days I was able to patch the methods that CBE used at the time. But fast forward to the update that introduced the slash kick command for the bedrock edition, CBE became a feature that was in the main client, and not just the beta only users, meaning any player could run any command they wanted with no immediate way to fix the issue that would essentially make the realm unplayable. Unity Anarchy, for the first time since it came online, was taken down temporarily. After a good two months of letting whitelisted hackers on a test server go absolutely mad with hacks to test the new security methods in which, mind you, was only made up of command blocks, I and some of those hackers came up with some simple solutions to the CBE exploit. An announcement was then made on my Discord server letting whitelisted players from an SMP realm we were partnered with at one time join Unity Anarchy early to test the security for the masses. But the problem was, barely anyone seemed to get online for more than a few minutes. This seems bad for a realm that rivaled Chaotic Anarchy's player count, but I considered it was probably the fact the realm was only open to a limited audience. So after a while of making sure the security would prevent the CBE exploit, 
Unity the Anarchy then went online again. And the realm is still online to this day. But as of currently, only three people at a time are online nowadays. This tells me that the realm snowball effect must have died. Now, if you want to join the realm, then being in the Discord server is required. That link will be in the description of this video. I made this video to shed some light on a wholesome side project led by Unity that was then ruined by a nasty exploit. Now, to the people from my Discord, I know I have left out some details, and I apologize. So to make up for that, I will then be posting a Q&A for the next video regarding this realm. So, if you guys have a question, leave it in the comments below, and I will answer it. Either you can come and save me or just let my heart collapse Either you can come and clean me or let me fall into the last Either you become my savior or just stab me in the back I don't want it to go back, I don't want it to go back